Hey guys, it's Rainy Blood back again with another video here to give you my review of WWE Clash of Champions 2017. Now, uh, this I was the show got off the air like an hour ago, just over an hour ago. I was trying to uh, get everyone out of the room so I could do this without feeling weird, you know. But here I am finally doing it. I hope it will still say uploaded on December 17, 2017, uh, instead of December 18th, which is New Zealand time, because I want to prove that I did it um, on the day the show happened. But anyway, uh, guys, Clash of Champions, a uh, good show, actually, to be honest. I really enjoyed uh, every single match that was on here. I don't know what everyone else thinks, um, but I don't think I should let it uh, offend my opinion, I guess. Um, but yeah, uh, some stuff I was scared would happen, did not happen, some really cool stuff happened, uh, which was awesome, the ending was just perfect, okay, it made me feel completely satisfied with the ending, I'm just gonna have a quick drink of water, <sighs> alright, Let's get this thing going, shall we? Then we have the pre-show match. Of course, as always, we got Mojo Rawley versus Zack Ryder. If you guys don't know, Mojo Rawley actually turned on Zack Ryder and turned heel. So, therefore, this match became a thing. Right from the right from the bat, you had Zack and Mojo attacking each other. Uh, I think the crowd was barely chanting for Zack, actually cheering for Zack, I mean, and he got a few moves in, uh, I really enjoyed, uh, this match was pretty short though, it was only like 2-3 minutes, but um, for what it was, I thought it had pretty good storytelling honestly, with Mojo telling Zack, you know, is that the best you can got, or whatever he said, and Mojo of course gets the win, you know, the heel, when they turn heel on their partner, it's usually them who wins anyway, so, yeah. Uh, nice little storytelling match right there, even though it was pretty short. I still enjoyed it for what it was. Uh, then we have, um, then we have the mat, the show officially beginning, and we open up with the triple threat match for the WWE United States Championship. We have Baron Corbin uh. defending against Bobby Roode and Dolph Ziggler in a triple threat match. This match was awesome, guys. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm torn between either this or the main event, which was match of the night. But man, I really enjoyed this, guys. From the get-go, you had uh, Bobby Roode and Dolph Ziggler, even though they're enemies in um, WWE right now. Um, teaming up on Corbin, you know, because he's the heel who's trying to always cheat his way out of everything, you know. And yeah, and they actually get him out for a bit. And then it was Bobby Roode and Dolph Ziggler for a good moment. And they did some pretty awesome stuff together. And this match was awesome. It was about 10-15 minutes. And they were just going at it, okay? A um, lot of awesome counters. A uh, lot of awesome false finishes. The times when you thought the match was over. And it wasn't. It was just really awesome, fun stuff. You know, just from beginning to end, basically. And the ending was just perfect, man. Here's how it ended. Uh, Baron Corbin pretty much had the match won. He was about to do the... Uh, End of days onto Bobby Roode, but Dolph Ziggler comes from behind, and as uh, Baron Corbin is doing the end of days, we have uh, uh, Dolph Ziggler um, doing the uh, what do you call it? The zigzag onto uh, Corbin, and and uh, Corbin actually didn't uh, fully land the uh, end of days, so 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 Ziggler pinned. Uh, Corbin, one, two, three, shockingly, Dolph Ziggler is United States Champion, I was pretty happy for him, I was fine with either of these guys winning, honestly, I'm a, I'm a big fan of all three of these guys, honestly, uh, I thought, I thought there was no chance that Dolph would win, I thought maybe Bobby Roode would win the title here, pinning Dolph Ziggler, and same goes for Corbin, maybe, just to pin Ziggler, but no, nope, really good match, really enjoyed it, awesome, awesome match, a lot of fun. The crowd seemed happy with the results, so yeah. Then we have the next match. The Fatal 4-Way match for the WWE SmackDown Tag Team Championship. We have the Usos 
uh, the thing is the New Day, Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin, and Rusev and English Aiden English on Rusev Day. <laughs> this was a pretty fun match. All four teams were actually legal, which I did not know about. And when the match started, uh, I didn't really, uh, I wasn't really paying attention to the start of the match because uh, I was talking to a friend on Facebook on my phone on my alternate Facebook, by the way, not my real Facebook, because uh, that's still suspended for a couple more days. Um, but um. This was a fun match, you know, what do you expect, just great fatal for action, false finishes and whatnot, you know. And uh, Usos retained of course, uh, there were times, especially near the end when you thought Rusev and English were actually going to win the titles, uh, but that didn't happen. I was kind of rooting for them, I was fine with any of these teams winning to be honest, because um, I'm a big fan of all, all four of these teams, but you know, I was, you know, Usos retained, they are awesome, you know, so yeah. And then we have the next match. We have the Lumberjack match for the WWE SmackDown Women's Championship. We have Charlotte Flair defending against Natalia. Now, this was a pretty fun match, guys. It was only 10 minutes, but it was a lot of fun. You had uh, uh, the Lumberjacks, of course, attacking uh, Natalia and Charlotte whenever they got out of the ring. You did. You had Charlotte do a diamond moonsault onto all of the Lumberjacks. That was pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, Natalia trying to do stuff, uh, just really fun, it was only about 10 minutes, but it was really fun for what it was, ending was awesome, you had um, Natalia try to lock the sharpshooter onto Charlotte Flair, but Charlotte Flair does an amazing reversal into the figure 8, Natalia taps out, Charlotte Flair retains, yes, 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 awesome, guarantee she's going to go into Wrestlemania 34, the, uh, the SmackDown Winners Champion, guarantee, like I, I really think so and we get the next match we have the bludgeon brothers if you don't know consisting of luke harper and eric rowan against breezango of course consisting of tyler breeze and fandango just a squash really just to you know build up the bludgeon brothers a bit more but it was it was just what it was you know whatever we don't really need to talk about it then we have the next match which i thought was going to be the main event but it wasn't but whatever you know, we have a two-on-two tag team match with Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan as the special guest referees, both of them at the same time. We have Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens taking on Randy Orton and Shinsuke Nakamura. And if Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens lose, then they are fired from WWE. And I mean WWE as a whole, not just SmackDown, okay? As a whole. The thing with this is, you know, the story between uh, Shane McMahon and Kevin Owens and just recently Sami Zayn. You know, Shane has beef with them for many reasons. Um, so when Shane was announced as the referee, um, it was so obvious he was just going to be biased and have Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn lose with the fast gun probably. Yeah, and... Uh, so that's why Daniel Bryan was announced, and yes, they were both the referees at the same time, okay? It was Daniel Bryan and Shane Man, both in the same ring at the same time, okay? And this match was a lot of fun, you know? I feel like what really sold this match was the storytelling, you know? You had awesome storytelling between the referees, Shane Man, and Daniel Bryan. The wrestlers did great too, like you had, um, you had Kevin Owens uh, put uh, Shinsuke Nakamura through the table actually, uh, kind of doing like a body splash thing. That was really cool. And you had Daniel Bryan, like just knowing that Shane McMahon is just being biased, you know, so he's making him mess up. And then it gets a little bit more heated on as the match progresses. And the way the match ended was awesome. By the way, uh, Kevin Owens actually bumped into Daniel Bryan to make him get off the count for for when Sami Zayn got, got pinned by Randy Orton after he hit Nakayo. Uh, that was cool. Um, I thought uh, Brian actually uh, attacked Shane himself, but he didn't. Um, but this was awesome. That was, that was awesome. Awesome storytelling, like I said. And the way the match ended was, was awesome. You had, uh, you had Ray Norton about to do another IKO onto Sami Zayn. And Daniel Bryan at this point is just completely pissed off at Shane McMahon. So, Ray Norton attempts to do the IKO. Sami Zayn reverses, rolls him up, and Daniel Bryan, fast count, one, two, three, Sami Zayn, Kim Owens win, they keep their jobs, awesome, you know, that was just, that was awesome ending, 
Oh my god, if this leads to Daniel Bryan returning to the ring, not getting my hopes up, but it could be, you know. And probably in a match with Shane McMahon, maybe at the Royal Rumble or WrestleMania, that would be amazing, man. That would be absolutely freaking amazing. It seriously would. To see Daniel Bryan back in the ring and against Shane McMahon, that would be just one really fun match, man. Just, yeah, but that's it. That was the match. And, of course, we got the main event. We got the WWE Champion defending his title. Uh, okay, sorry. Let me start again. We got the WWE Championship match as the main event. We got the phenomenal AJ Styles def defending, defending against the modern-day Maha Reject. Yes, I said Maha Reject. Jinder Mahal. This was a really good match, guys. I really enjoyed this match. Awesome storytelling. You could tell that Jinder just wanted to beat AJ Styles on his own. He really didn't want the Sting Brothers to help. It was kind of like he was pushing them away, you know, throughout the match, which was pretty cool. And, um... Uh... And you had Jinder just doing a whole bunch of moves. A lot of moves that I don't think I've ever seen Jinder do, honestly. And I was pretty impressed with this performance. Like, I gotta say, this is probably the best performance from Jinder Mahal, probably ever. And, funny thing, I just want to say one thing. Back in, like, September, maybe, I had a feeling, like, I just had a funny feeling that that AJ Styles versus Jinder Mahal would be the main event of this Clash of Champions preview. Except, I thought Jinder would be the champion going in. Funny, and that actually turned out to be the main event. It's just that, just with AJ Styles as a champion, which is even better. You know? And, you know, you had Jinder just beating the crap out of AJ. You had AJ knocking off the sing, the sings, um, and, uh, and, uh, uh, a lot of counters. Uh, Jinder was actually trying to do, like, a super colossus, avalanche colossus, colossus from the second rope or whatever, um, that was, uh, and, uh, I don't know, uh, I'm kind of curious to see, uh, like, what he would try, to, what he was trying to do exactly. It's like they're just kind of trying to show the setup of the move, and not him actually doing it. Um, not that we really need to, you know, I'm just a little bit curious, you know. But AJ counted, and Jenna Mahal actually does the Coloss successfully onto AJ, just a regular Coloss, not a second rip Coloss or anything like that. And to my... Surprise! I don't know if I was surprised or not. AJ kicked out. This is the first time that someone has ever kicked out of the class, guys. I don't know why they were so protective of that, of that freaking finisher all year. But, whatever. And Jinder, I kind of cracked, I kind of chuckled a bit at this. Jinder tried to do the, uh, uh, Styles Clash. He was doing the thing that AJ does before he, before he actually does the move, but AJ counters. AJ puts Jinder in the and the, what's it called, the, 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 his submission move, calf crusher, yeah, Jinder gets the ropes, but AJ, or Jinder almost gets the ropes, but AJ gets up a little bit, pulls Jinder back, puts him back in, Jinder Mahal taps out to the, what's it called, the, the calf crusher, yeah, Jinder taps out, AJ Styles retains the WWE Championship. Yes, I was so scared that Jinder was going to win it back, guys. If Jinder had won it back, I would have been so pissed off that like you wouldn't believe. AJ Styles retains. Deal with it, okay? I can't believe some people actually defended Jinder, man. But anyway, I really enjoyed this match. As for Jinder, his reign of terror is over, okay? He should never be in the WWE Championship picture ever again. But to be honest, he has gotten better, I'll be fair. He has gotten much better as a wrestler. And I feel like um, he should definitely... I wouldn't mind seeing him in the U.S. title picture, maybe. You know, it'd be kind of cool to see someone like Jinder as U.S. champion, in my opinion, maybe. But, whatever. At the end of the day, uh, you know, AJ is still WWE champion tonight. And I'm so happy about that. You know. And, um... Yep, guys, that was my final review of 2017, like, in terms of movie thoughts videos, 
WWE pay-per-view reviews, anything like that. That was my final one in 2017. Uh, nice pay-per-view. Um, I liked it. Um, um, next time you see, you, next time you guys see me, it'll be Christmas, and I'll be doing my annual Christmas vlog. You know. And uh, next time you guys see me, also, my my main Facebook will be back on. I can't wait for that, man. And um, next month, the Royal Rumble. You know? I feel like I'm forgetting something. I always forget something to say. But anyway, that was my review of Clash of Champions, guys. Uh, I reviewed every single WWE pay per view of uh, 2017. Yeah. Uh, except for. Uh, um, if you if you count NXT, I, 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 I didn't do TakeOver San Antonio, which was which happened the, the day before the Royal Rumble. But the Royal Rumble was pretty much my comeback to doing these reviews because in late 2016, I did not do uh, the reviews of those. But yeah, anyway, so that's my, um, that's my review, guys. I pretty much said everything. And yeah, hope you guys have a good night. And I'll uh, see you guys uh, on Christmas Day. Cheers.